everyone. Welcome. I'm really, really thrilled today to be speaking with Amina Blackshear, who teaches at GSAP and has been teaching for some time as an adjunct faculty. She's been very much embedded in the core of the M M Master of Architecture program, but also leading uh, Advanced Studio 4. And so kind of has a very uh, interesting peak in the beginning and the middle uh, of, of, you know, a kind of trajectory in a student's life uh, in the MR program, you know, as they start and then as they start to shape their position and kind of expand their scale. And I know, Amina, you've really pushed issues of representation and boundaries of uh, the discipline in terms of how, you know, what are the tools we engaged in, engage in and how we hybridize and how we have agency. And um, so I wanted you to talk about that and then expand into Atelier Office and your practice and ideas about practice, so. Sure, sure. Well, thank you, Dean Andros, for having me. It's lovely to have this one-on-one -on -one, um, chance to uh, have this collaborative conversation. And it's pretty rare to just be able to unpack one issue at a time. Um, it's been a joy to teach Core 1 and Advanced 4 um, this year, I'm, I'm lucky to have the repetition that this is the third time that I've taught Core 1. And so I've seen um, when we first brought in this new syllabus of dissecting Broadway in eight segments um, across the eight studios. And then last year, um, I really took on a region of Broadway that overlaps with some of my own research. Um, it's from Houston to 30th Street. Um, and so that we've looked at going all the way back using a lens of historical criticality and what was known as Land of the Blacks during um, New Amsterdam and really use the section to cut through history. So literally the ground, the surface, and then the air. Um, and students have selected really provocative sites to build their um, concepts around public space. So I really um, am I, I celebrate that students come with architecture backgrounds and from other backgrounds and that everyone has uh, something valuable to bring no matter what their background is. Um, and so th sometimes it, with core one, it's like unpacking this, like I need to catch up mentality and it's not really the case. It's maybe learning conventions and representation. But if you come from anthropology, physics, um, finance, there's many different kind of points of entry. Um, and so I, I really like the collaboration that happens amongst the students in Core One. Um, and I start with the brilliance of the student and then kind of pull out what is their expression and how can we execute that. Um, so it's really a, a kind of way of recognizing that everyone has a voice mm -hmm. and what are the tools modeling um, different drawing techniques um, animation, one-to-one -one mock-ups that you um, can express yourself. So I, I think the diversity of projects in Core One is just like, if there's 11 students, there's 11 unique projects. Um, so that's been really exciting. I'm always, uh, it's always, I mean, it's very interesting to hear you speak about both that kind of diversity of backgrounds mm -hmm. and different voices that get woven together in a in a in a in a studio and have a real kind of conversation around this line you know broadway that gets cut and critically but at the same time the fact that the students are able to develop their own their own voice which is something that i think we try to really support at the school and i was curious to tie that to when you meet them again uh like uh three semesters later yeah. And what, you know, what is your sense of, um, um, you know, that kind of flattening of difference in terms of skill, but maybe uh, uh, more difference in terms of position or, um, you know, kind of that, yeah. Yeah, I think Advanced 4 is perfectly suited as like a hinge point between you've completed the core three semesters and then it's the in-between of going off on like uh, a completely individual um, path of advanced five and six. And so I think it's, it's great to see the students 
um, have a site and and go deeper into um, a, a discursive mm -hmm. position on what, for example, um, last year we looked at um, the arts and the academy, what that meant to meld um, and what kind of high art and low art means when, when you're putting it in terms of in the context of an institution. And so we looked at the um, Newburgh Performing Arts Center as our kind of pseudo client in, in Newburgh. And that takes high school students and dance. Um, and the students came up with really provocative ways of thinking about how, to, how architecture serves as a liaison or um, a kind of in-between and, and really got to know in their site visits, like um, walking around, talking to people and meeting with the director of the academy. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's, I'm like sometimes astonished to see the progress that these are the same students um, that you really can't tell the difference between who had a background and who um, didn't, like you said, the kind of flattening of that skill set. And then when they have a more uh, defined point of entry, this is kind of the, it's almost more in a realistic client budget um, model of, of a project. And so that was really gratifying to see still very different projects across the studio, um, but they're um, really operating at a high level of sophistication in terms of uh, a building proposal with awareness of how it fits into the context. And I know um, kind of connecting high and low and idealist, I mean, the kind of very large scale aspirations about an, you know, sort of very embedded practice. Wanted to talk about uh, your, your, your practice atelier office uh, with uh, Mitch McEwen and uh, some of the ideas that are, uh, that you're working on, you know, I know you're in your own work, you've pushed the boundaries of architecture and performance and uh, again the kind of the digital and issues of visualization and technology is this kind of incredible incredibly rich set of um, sort of tools that you're kind of appropriating and wanted to hear a little bit more about where you are taking the practice and where you're taking architecture through that. Sure thank you. Um, so we Right now have, oh, I guess we'll start with our merger um, came because we really have an overlapping interest in um, kind of the mechanic and the body, the analog and the digital. Mitch had hosted a conference, Black Imagination Matters at Princeton and I contributed a project, Robot Double Dutch, trying to take the precision spatially, the spatial precision that robots have and imbue them with uh, rhythmic precision. So kind of time as well as space precision and showing that the games um, black girls play at four, five, six years old are actually there's a nuance and quite a lot of sophistication. And so this idea of kinetic intelligence was um, born into how can we reimagine drawing that it might not start initially from the machine, from the computer, the laptop, but that you can draw in three dimensional space and then um, translate that into digital. And then combining with um, an urban and computational um, tools, uh, it's been really exciting to, um, we were finalists for the Miami Design District and um, created a, 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 a pavilion of sorts, two pavilions um, using sequins to capture solar energy and emit light at night. Um, and we're really looking at it as um, ironically ramping up in this time. We see that like our, exist, our, resist, our existence is resistance, that even to be who we are and be like joy is, is kind of counter everything that says. And so it's like the, the seed coming up out of concrete or, um, and so we see it, we're based in New York, but we're really taking advantage of our international kind of um, reach. And we are working 
very early stages, but on um, a media village in East Africa and um, a theater project. Um, and it's kind of reimagining the face of the theater and the back of house um, in, in New Jersey. And it's been really great. We So far with this time, we've been really inventive of how we work. I was in Brazil, um, really started to uh, merge our, 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 our business model and, and start to work. And so we've been really productive um, in this remote time. So I think that's a good kind of foundation to have that whether we're a block away or you know, a couple states away, it's, it's like we're on the same page. That's, uh, that's amazing that you, um, I mean, I remember seeing the video of the launch of Atelier Office in the middle of the pandemic and, uh, you know, upheaval. And I was like, there is hope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there is optimism. There is hope. It was so energizing. And, uh, and I, I, I really do hear uh, when you say, uh, your existence is resistance and the sense of joyfulness uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of being an architect on your own terms and wanted to open that up even a little further. You mentioned before that, you know, it's not enough today to be anti-racist. We have to be pro-Black as architects and support, uh, you know, what it means to be Black and to be an architect in America today. And so uh, I'm sure your practice is pushing on those boundaries. Um, yeah. But to hear more about that as well. Yeah, that, that discussion was great because it was um, a kind of way of recognizing that when we talk about anti anything anti black racism, that's almost like waiting for something to happen, waiting for mm -hmm. an offense to happen and then countering it. Mm -hmm. But if we start with the like recognition of the like the um, like profound value of a person, then it doesn't have to wait until the insult is incurred. And so that's really where, like, I think to not be so um, de define oneself in relation to uh, a larger context or in relation to, but it's kind of a self-referential def definition. And so just starting with, um, it may not even have to, I think being pro-Black um, recognizes that um, you can just be who you are, that it doesn't have to be that you even refer to your race, but it's, it's almost the recognition of um, the inherent value of, of everyone, which seems revolutionary in some contexts, but if that's just a given, then um, so I think it might be like steering to one side in order to compensate, but I think I wanted to emphasize the, the pro, like the, the proactiveness of saying what you're for, um, rather than saying what you're countering. So, yeah. Well, certainly, Amina, you're a model and inspiration uh, mm -hmm. for um, so many of our students and myself and you know I mean just just kind of pioneering uh, on your own terms what it means to be an architect today in the world uh, mm -hmm. really inspiring and uh, I'm so happy to have you at the school so thank you. that means so much thank you Dean Andreas it's I really celebrate the creativity that's here um, in, in throughout the school and, and that this the school attracts and the students and the way that you're running um, the school. It's really um, um, kind of a, a juggernaut. It's, it's, a <laughs> deep place, it's the place to be. So thank Togetherness. you. Togetherness. Togetherness for a better world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amina. This was fantastic and uh, just so eager to see uh, your work just flourish. Oh, thank you very much. That really means a lot.